where are we today and what's your name? What are you doing here? Uh, we're at City Hall in Key, New Hampshire. Uh, my name is Andre. I live in Manch. Uh, I came here to see uh, you know, the full city council uh, uh, you know, uh, vote. I guess, I'm not sure if they're voting or just taking hearings, but basically the whole Bearcat situation in Key that's been hitting the news. What are your thoughts on the Bearcat? Um, I definitely don't want it. I heard Manch had one. Uh, and that was disappointing to hear. Um, you know, Bearcats, uh, militarized police, it's no fun. Uh, what, what's your biggest reason for uh, being against the Bearcat? Well, there's biggest reason? Well, I mean, obviously it's immoral because it's paid through uh, uh, stolen money, i.e. taxes. But also, the worst thing you, the, the worst thing you want to do is uh, militarize uh, low, you know, the mono those who have a monopoly on force, which is, you know, the police. Um, I think it's extremely dangerous for them to have the same tools as those people uh, in Afghanistan and Iraq, considering the amount of insanity that they do just there with those tools. Are you at all afraid that the recent passage of the indefinite detention bill would be used uh, in conjunction with this new piece of machinery? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, you see similar things all the time with SWAT teams and ICE. I mean, they have big, you know, so without a doubt. That just, you know, just it gives them more reason to because of the how easily now it will be to determine someone a terrorist and uh, remove their habeas corpus rights. Okay, so what would be the ideal for you tonight? What would you like to see? Um, for it not to be bought and not for it not to be bought. Okay, great. Thank you very much for your time. Anything else you wanted to say to the people watching? Come to New Hampshire! <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's great. Good to see you. Hey, you're on today's episode, just so you know. Uh, it's playing now, so awesome. Yeah. Ten seconds. Stand by. Five, four, three. The hour of seven o'clock having arrived, I will call and order this regular meeting of the Keene City Council and welcome the viewers of Cheshire TV. If any members of the public would like to receive an electronic version of the City Council packet for reference while you are there <coughs> to the broadcast, Please contact the city clerk's office during business hours or go to the city's website. The clerk, please call the roll. Charles H. Redburn. Here. Larry M. Clark. Here. Philip Dale Friesen. Here. Ace P. Duffy. Here. Hugh M. Donegan. Carl B. Jacobs. Here. Chrissy Roberts. Here. Dennis O. Van Warren. Here. Thomas F. Powers. Here. David C. Richards. Here. Dan H. Edmore. Here. Mitchell H. Greenwald. Here. Ruth R. Venezia. Here. David R. Meter. Here. Philip M. Jones. Here. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Thank you, Councilor
Jones for a motion. Your Honor, I move to accept the minutes of February 16, 2012. Second. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. We have uh, two birthdays to announce uh, tonight. Carl uh, Jacobs, congratulations. Another one? Yep. And Congratulations. Tonight we have a public hearing. If the uh, clerk would call, would read the notes. Notice is hereby given that a public hearing will be held before the Keene City Council relative to the proposed City of Keene Capital Improvement Program for the six-year period starting July 1st, 2012 and ending June 30th, 2018. The plan identifies non-school capital projects and equipment acquisitions that are planned to be undertaken in the community in which calls for a financial investment totaling $82,784,105 for local, state, and federal resources. The first year investment totals $16,644,127 from all sources. The local portion of the program is funded by the sale of bonds, property taxes, and other miscellaneous sources. Thank you. I would now like to open the public hearing on the 2012 to 2018 Capital Improvement Program for the City of Keene. This is a public hearing on the Capital Improvement Program authorized under New Hampshire RSA 674-5. The purpose of the CIP is to aid in the consideration of the annual budget. This is the capital portion of the budget. I will first recognize the Finance Director for her comments and then review the CIP by each department. As we go through each department, I will open up that department's discussion up for any questions or comments that anyone might wish to make. At the end, I will open the public hearing to any general comments. Martha? Thank you. Good evening. Of the electrical upgrade, which will include the rehabilitation of the Mount Forbush Hazard Beacon Light in Swansea. That has a cost of $500,000, of which 97.5% will be from a federal grant. Uh, the second item on page 26 is maintenance of the pavement, which is on page, let's see, page uh, 58. Uh, the police department is recommending portable radar signs in the first year of the CIP for an expenditure of $30,519. This will be to purchase six portable radar signs to be shared with the police department and the public works. Does anyone have any questions or comments relating to the uh, capital projects for the police department? Uh, yes, I think the uh, police department. Mr. Bernard, would you please identify yourself and your address? Oh, sure. Ian Freeman, actually, not Bernard. Uh, 63 Emerald Street. And anyway, I think that the uh, police department should be defunded until they stop hurting peaceful people. Thank you. Yeah. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak regarding the police department? All right, seeing none, the next department we will move on to is Public Works. Uh, public, public Works Department can be found beginning on page uh, 59 with the Consolidated Infrastructure Report uh, and continuing, actually it's the probably the largest section that, that we have conti continuing on to, I guess, page 84. We, we actually have several projects in Public Works scheduled for installation during the first year of the Capital Improvement Program. The first one would be curb installation, uh, granite curb installation in the amount of $223,700, which is to install granite curbing along Middle Street, Winter <coughs> Street, Washington Street, all in conjunction with other infrastructure work being performed in those areas. 
The second item on page 67 is drainage maintenance, which is, involves the cleaning of approximately 1,250 <coughs> catch basins and two miles of drain lines in the, in the, or the storm drain lines in the city of Keene. The third item is the drainage program in the amount of 500. I think they're a huge waste of money. Uh, in addition, they also destroy the parking situation because now it's almost impossible for people to park up on the, uh, the grass a little bit and, and keep the roads actually clear. So if someone wants to park in front of a house, for instance, they actually have to park fully 100% in the street, which if you've got a situation like a pumpkin fest, for instance, or even any fairly busy night uh, on a street, it pretty much restricts the street to one lane of traffic. Uh, so it's, it's not only inconvenient for people that are trying to park and get down the street, but it also sounds like a big waste of money. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sutherland. <coughs> Try to get through uh, a couple of these issues, but uh, the curbing I brought could, up. Could you identify yourself? Uh, Bob Sutherland, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I brought the curbing up every year. Uh, not only have we seen it be approximately 10% of the overall cost of some of the uh, resurfacing and improvement projects, um, but uh, one of the things we discussed last year is the great amount of water that is now then forced down the, the storm drains and into the river. We are in a floodplain. <coughs> you know, if anything, there is a great amount of water that could just be normally soaking into the, the, the earth around us rather than trying to funnel it into something that could cause flooding downstream. So um, I was surprised to also find on page 67 that we're also looking at taking some of that uh, excess water now that's going down in the storm drains and then um, uh, uh, filtering it um, uh, you know, uh, before we you know, clean it, before we put it back in the river. So we could just let it soak into the ground rather than having to then pump it to have it processed and treated before we put it back in the river, which could cause flooding. So I, I find that a little uh, interesting. Um, re with regard to the sidewalk on page 79, uh, it says here, the city has over 52 miles of sidewalks. The need for maintaining and replacing existing sidewalks and installing new sidewalks greatly exceeds available resources. Well, so why, are we, why do we continually build out this environment without with acknowledging that it's hard for us to maintain this. Um, I've brought up for several years now that the public works should, we should be looking at a particular plan to determine when we put in a sidewalk, whether or not we need a sidewalk on both sides of the street. Do we put in sidewalks on dead end streets? So let's think about a, a master plan for sidewalks so that we can bring in the maintenance and cost uh, under control. And then, uh, you know, with regard to the, the possible roundabout or oval, oval about, I missed the uh, February 16th meeting. So, but going over to page 81, the uh, um, uh, Island Street, Pearl Street, all of that, there was a discussion that we may end up putting in some kind of oval about that would tra dr drive traffic around. I don't know what the current plan is, but uh, we do have here all the way out in. Neither uh, do we. <laughs> okay. Because fiscal year 17, we're looking at at $4.7 million. And as you know, I, I believe that the Main Street roundabout, we overspent by about three times. Uh, so what, what initiated, at least on Main Street, as what should have been a resurfacing project turned into a big uh, underground utilities program at three to four times the cost. That's all I have. Uh, before you leave, one thing I wish to point out is, is we actually have paid attention to, to some of the comments that you've made in the past years. And we have developed a master plan regarding sidewalks. And if you if you look at page 78, you'll see you'll see that that uh, excuse me, it's not 78. Um, somewhere in here, we've, we've developed a um, schematic for for sidewalks where we've been able to evaluate all all both existing and proposed sidewalks to be built in the future. So so that, here it is, at page 75. Okay. Uh, so, so the uh, we actually have done what you've asked us to do, and, and we have developed a, a master plan, and, and we de developed a uh, a system for uh, evaluating whether sidewalk should go in or not. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Sutherland. 
My name is Frank Mazzola. I'm here representing King State College. Um, <coughs> I'm here essentially to to ask the uh, council to consider the portions of the CIP that um, reflect work, particularly pedestrian improvements in areas of the state district, and most particularly the areas of Ralston Street, where student housing is well, housing is being developed primarily for students, and. Um, a recognition that there's going to be much more pedestrian traffic in these areas. Ralston Street is a, I would call a secondary street that hasn't had significant improvements in, in uh, many, many years. The east side of the street presently doesn't have any sidewalks nor curbs. Uh, lighting is, is uh, quite basic. Uh, crosswalks are very simple. And the college would like to advocate that the city <coughs> consider upgrading this area that will probably see a much greater pedestrian vehicle interaction in the near future. I have these comments in writing. I'd like to just submit them for the record. Okay, that 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 would be fine. And I and I would say that Emerald Street, in fact, is is, is the second highest rated uh, area in the city for need for sidewalks, and and we are looking at at Ralston Street to to determine. Uh, well, as a practical matter, can, we can do <coughs> what that's going to cost, so so that we can evaluate Washington, uh, Ralston Street as well. So we do appreciate your comments. Thank you. <coughs> Does anyone else wish to speak? Yes. And since this has turned into a hearing on uh, pavement, pavement projects, I'd just like to add is that since they repaved two years ago, I believe, the height of the curbstones are dangerous in uh, icy weather. So you have to step down from a fairly high height, and if your foot hits ice, you're going down. So that's, uh, just some pet peeve of mine has been around for a long time, but this was not mention it. Right. right. It, 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 are there any particular ones that that the, that, you, that you're concerned about, or are you concerned about the curbs in general? Well, one of the new curbs along West Street, uh, the north side, the south side of West Street, and I think there's a lot of them out there down by the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, I almost found that out there. Uh, and uh, when you walk along, there's a lot of curbless areas. But in my neighborhood, it's Edgewood Suburban. It's curbless. And, no problems with not having a curb or a sidewalk there. So I would uh, minimize the sidewalk, <coughs> sidewalk curbing as much as possible. That's it. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak regarding the public work? Uh, Mr. Sutherland. Sorry for the oversight. <coughs> One other question that I had relative to some of the work that's planned in 2013 for Middle Street and Winter Street. Yes. Those are the streets that surround the new court building that is built. Right. So uh, I recall that in previous discussions, this was going to be subsequent to all of the work that was to be done on the streets. Are we concerned about the damage uh, from trucks and heavy vehicles and uh, etc.? Yes. The um, uh, Bank of America sounds really high. Just. Just the five of what's going on. On Washington Street? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak on the parking decks? Mm -hmm. uh, and that, and the <coughs> parking infrastructure can be found uh, on page 88, it begins. <coughs> the, uh, there are a number of projects being proposed this year from the parking fund get up spaces for the new fire department and the other future plans. It'd be great to see more parking in these decks available for the general public. Thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, does anyone else have any comments regarding the parking fund? I'm Mary Carroll. I live in Roxbury Plaza. There's about 108 spaces on the lower deck. <coughs> about 30 and 32 are available to the public as metered spaces, and three of those are handicapped. There's a lot of empty spaces there that no cars are in. Um, I lease the space. I 
pay forty dollars. The solid solid waste facility uh, on Summit Road. The, uh, that can be found on page uh, nineteen at one hundred Colorado Street, nineteen. Um, does the wastewater treatment plant? That's a question first. Does the wastewater treatment plant include um, human uh, waste? It's primarily human waste. Okay. Um, I, I would just like to to you know, comment that <clears throat> that I think that we all need to recognize, and I would hope that the city of Keene would formally recognize that uh, with um, one percent of the world's uh, water being fresh water, for you know most people consider that drinking water eventually, um, is is being wasted a lot by um, the way that we uh, process human sewage. Um, if you would uh, avail yourself to the Human or Handbook, you get an idea of ways that we could all um, compost uh, our own waste in a, in a very um, uh, sanitary, I mean, it, in the end it's sanitary, I mean, it's like, you know, you have to be careful with the human waste, but anyway, um, I just want to say that I think that uh, the City Council should recognize that it's unsustainable to continue to foul up uh, the world's uh, fresh water in such a wasteful manner. And uh, uh, like I said, Human Earth Handbook is a good place to start. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any, are there, is there any more questions or comments relating to the waste? Mr. Sutherland. Um, you're on page 120 for this, uh, the uh, phosphorus uh, uh, requirements by the EPA at the cost of close to $4 million. Um, during some of these meetings, one of the best questions that came up was whether or not we meet these EPA requirements now, put this water back into the river, whether or not it actually has any impact on the phosphorus levels in the river because there are so many other phosphorus natural in the environment, phosphorus in uh, uh, whatever fertilizers and whatnot that end up getting into the waterways. Did anybody find out uh, whether or not this is worth it for us to meet these obligations for the EPA, the unfunded, or largely, I see we get $300,000. That was a question that came up though. Nobody seemed to know whether or not we would even be able to determine by meeting the new requirements, whether or not the phosphorus level in the river would even go down. And so here we are, taxpayers, $4 million, <coughs> to meet something that may have no impact on the environment. Unfortunately, I don't have an answer to your question here tonight, but, but I will have an answer, or we will have an answer at the uh, Finance Organization Personnel Committee meeting next Thursday when, when this will be taken up. And, and I do appreciate the concern and, and the issue that you raise. I think it's one that, that the Council has been raising for a number of years. Um, Fortunately, we've been able to reduce the, the cost of what's been imposed on us from about $16 million down, down to about $4 million. I recall it that's still a lot of money. Two years ago. Yes. Uh, and, but we will, I will try to make sure that somebody is at the Finance Organization Personnel Committee from the Wastewater Treatment Plant who can respond to that question. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions regarding the uh, Wastewater Treatment Plant? Or the sewage or the sewer pond. Seeing none, the uh, next item that we will go to will be the equip uh, the water fund. <coughs> um, the water fund can be found on <coughs> page, can be found on page one fifty five. One, 154 of the CIP. In the equipment fund, we are proposing two expenditures during this fiscal year, uh, during the fiscal year that starts July 1st. First will be $460,000, which is ongoing funding for the routine replacement of city vehicles and other equipment in the fleet. Secondly, will be $224,587 which is the scheduled replacement of city vehicles and equipment in the fleet. The total equipment fund expenditures are $684,587. Is there any comments or questions about the equipment fund? All right, seeing none, uh, I will now open this up for any general comments that anyone wishes to make.
Gavin's <coughs> program for the city of Keene for the fiscal years begin, beginning uh, July 1st, 2012 and ending June 30th, 2018. Mr. Sutherland. I just want to quickly say thank you to everybody for allowing me to spend time with you to go through this uh, a lot of questions. We appreciate the fact that you, do, you you take the time to, I mean, this is an $84 million expenditure by the City of Keene. We do appreciate the fact that you take the time to review this. You know, I think we can always do better. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Does anyone else have any comments they'd like to make? <coughs> Uh, my name's Pete Ayer. I'm at 75 Lever Street. Um, I'll just encourage y'all. I know you guys have good intentions, but remember, like everything that you guys are uh, taking money from people to do, if there's a demand for it, it would be provided for, and it would be provided for more efficiently via consensual interactions than from a centralized bureaucracy. So I just encourage you to think about that. Thank you. Uh, are, there any, are there any other comments that anyone wishes to make regarding the capital improvement projects? I, if not, at this time, uh, I will close this portion of the public hearing. <coughs> However, the public hearing will, will remain open for written testimony until 1 p.m. on Tuesday, March 6th. Written remarks may be submitted to the city clerk's office and must be personally signed in order to be included in the record. This matter will be referred to the Finance Organization and Personnel Committee uh, for them, for them, for their consideration at the next meeting. <coughs> you can go out and shuffle paper for a minute here. Okay, the next item on on the agenda will be elections, nominations, appointments, and confirmations. A hey, confirmations. Yeah, this is a development committee report regarding a communication from the Piazza for a sidewalk cafe and request to occupy multiple storefronts. And on a vote of five to zero, the planning license and development committee recommends the city council grant permission to the Piazza to extend their sidewalk cafe beyond their storefront onto property located in front of Domino's Pizza subject to the following conditions. Compliance with the requirements of section 46-1191 through 46- Six of the city code, the furnishing of a certificate of liability insurance in the amount of one million dollars in the city of Keene as an additional insured, and the middle of a signed letter of permission from the adjacent property owner for the use of the additional storefront. This license shall expire on March 1st, 2013. Signed, Phil M. Jones. Council Jones. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the intent of the committee report. It's been moved and seconded. I is there it. Council Jones. Thank you. Um, this is one of those scenarios, Your Honor, where they're not asking to serve liquor, but their uh, location is going to extend beyond their own storefront, their own public storefront, on city property. Thank you. And this, and this is a renewal of an existing license? Yes, sir. All right. Is, are there any, fur any further questions or comments? <clears throat> if not, are we ready for a vote? All those in favor? Opposed? Item 3A3. We have a planning license and development committee report regarding a communication from Kathleen Doyle, the Keene High School project, project graduations, use of vacant space. And on a vote of 5 to 0, the planning license and development committee recommends that Kathleen Doyle, the Keene High School project graduations, use of vacant space. And on a vote of 5 to 0, the planning license and development committee recommends that Kathleen Doyle, the Keene High School project graduations, use of vacant space. And on a vote of 5 Obviously, there's a lot of interest in this next item. I would ask that all councilors remember that we're elected to act in the best interest of the citizens of Keene. Our jurisdiction is local. We do not deal with federal or state tax policy. We do not deal with federal or state spending policy. I would ask that you please restrict your remarks to the local <coughs> issues that are germane and relevant to this discussion, and anything else will be ruled out of order. Uh, Council Greenwald for motion. Your Honor. Yes. I ask that I be recused from any discussion, any vote regarding this matter. I, be, I, be, I believe that recusal is is on is on record, and you may be excused from this item. Thank you. And also from the chamber, you may be excused from the chamber during this discussion. <coughs> uh, Council Greenwald for motion. I feel like Ryan Seacrest or something. <laughs> 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 
enjoy the publicity while it lasts. Thank you. Tomorrow we'll all be gone. I don't think so. Second. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, Council Greenwald. Yes, thank you. Uh, last December, King was offered a Homeland Security grant to purchase a Bearcat vehicle. Uh, and as everybody... Excuse me just a minute. You need to stay back. Uh, you may not be up here in front. You, 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 please remove yourself from, from the uh, front, of, front of this area. I don't see all the cool hurting. If you want to object, if you want to argue with me, I'll ask you to be removed from the room. But otherwise, I would simply ask that you that you that you stay in the, stay back. If any 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 way you're inter interfering with the operation of, of this meeting is not going to be accepted. I'm just striving for transparency. I do prefer your request. I didn't hurt anybody. I just want that noted. All right, Council Greenwald, you may continue. Okay, one more time. <clears throat> Last December, King was offered a Homeland Security grant to fund the purchase of a Bearcat vehicle. The vote at the time was 13 to 1 in favor. In January, a letter was received from Councilor Clark requesting a review and potentially a, a reconsideration of the issue by the new council, which is allowed by our rules of order. Uh, the Finance Organization Personnel Committee held a public meeting in which uh, there was verbal input, written input, and all of this has been recorded into the record. The committee considered the information. Again, it has been recorded. And the decision made by the committee at the time was to accept it as informational, but it did not recommend any further action. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there any, any further discussion? Uh, Council Clark. Yes, Your Honor, thank you. I'd like to amend the committee report. Go ahead. I move to amend the committee report so as to rescind the prior action taken by the City Council on December 15, 2011 and to reject the Homeland Security Grant for the Lenko Bearcat Vehicle. Is there a second? Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, Councilor Clark, do you wish to speak to your motion? Um, yes, I do. I, I do want to point of order. I was unaware of, of the uh, restrictions that were going to be placed upon the discussion this evening. And I guess the, 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 rest, the, restrictions, the restrictions are limited to what is within our jurisdiction. And, and anything else is irrelevant to our discussion. If I, if I, if I start to stray, I, I would appreciate it. I'll let you know. <laughs> thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, I, uh, uh, Mayor Lane, I want to thank you very much for putting this vote off uh, until I return. I really appreciate it. I thank my fellow counselors for going along with that. And I want to congratulate uh, Chair uh, Greenwald for running a very fair, open, and very expedient uh, public hearing on uh, the February 9th, so long ago it seems, you know. At the end of that meeting, uh, of that hearing, a uh, city manager uh, came up to me with a folded piece of paper that his granddaughter had been scribbling on uh, during the hearing and uh, written on it in, uh, in colored pencil. Very good penmanship <coughs> in your age, I might ask. Uh, with the words, no bear cat. Yeah, yeah. So, out of the mouths of babes and hundreds, hundreds of people who have contacted me one way or the other about this issue, and not, and anybody, I, I saw most of you at the public hearing, so you've heard many of the, many of the uh, uh, reasons that people oppose this, and there seems to be a lot of uh, the kind of issue where you know, it's something for everybody, not for everybody. And it's not just one person's issue. I mean, you know, you hear from, from conservatives and liberals and, and, and you know, men and women and old people and young people and, and doctors and lawyers and uh, uh, gosh, I, I, my vote was praised by the Chamber of Commerce's uh, Citizen of the Year. So you got, you got lots of people out here that have one problem with this or another. I was going to mention, I, I do believe that it has a lot to do with uh, local policy in that our federal dollars uh, come from our income taxes here in the city. And, uh, so you, 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 if I tread carefully, up, I, I guess I wasn't, wasn't uh, prepared for, for, for this. I wanted to bring up a statement that the Lenko uh, representative had made to the national press about this issue. And what he said was that this grant 
was the opportunity for Lenco to tap in to a $34 billion domestic violence market, which in my mind really meant only one thing, that it was a poster child for all of that waste and fraud that we're talking about, and all of the politicians in the world are running around saying that they're going to do something about. Uh, something, it's a policy created in Washington uh, over the last 10 or 12 years, past, you know, because of 9-11. That's not the issue that's before the Keene City Council. Yes, yes. We don't, we don't make that policy, the Federal Congress does. Okay, so I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> so if we if we accept this grant, uh, because if, if we don't, it's it's going to be passed on to some other town, and I guess that's that's one of the big reasons that many of you have uh, for, uh, for passing this. And I'll just try to when when you were growing up, did you ever make an excuse to your mother for when you did something really stupid and you just said, "Well, Johnny did it." And, and, and your mother would say, well, if Johnny jumped off the cliff, would you do that too? You know, but listen to your mother. Listen to your mother. She, she... Oh, gosh. <laughs> Item four, five, six, seven, I can't talk about. All right, but... The Lenko representative also said something that touched the nerve with me, and, and I really uh, wish he was here that I could discuss it with him. Maybe it's a good thing he was not. Yeah. He said that the people who oppose this must not care about the safety of the police department in the city of Keene. That's not true. How dare? How dare you say that? Oh. First of all, I want everybody to just sort of say it to yourself a few times and, and you just realize how stupid it sounds. That means if during our, our, our budget process, if uh, uh, we were to dare to uh, 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 oppose a single line item in one of the department's budgets. That ergo means that we're not supporting our, our employees, that, that we don't care about their safety. That's absolutely ridiculous. And it just, it just makes the point when people don't have facts, they always use fear tactics and shame tactics. And that's what's been used on us here. I wish I had done that. I'm not a very good speaker, and I just. <laughs> uh, the bottom line, I guess, is this isn't about public safety. I also saw the. the, the the sales video that uh, Lenko uses. And you know, it's a very action packed kind of thing. I can't blame the police departments and law enforcement officers get all excited about it because, you know, what red blooded American cop wouldn't get all excited about one of those action packed Schwarzenegger films, you know? Ooh, it really is something, you know? It really is. And, and, and it paints a picture of this vehicle that, that we all want to believe. And that, that, you know, if it brings upon, you know, scenarios of doom and gloom, things that are never going to happen, they're never going to happen. You know, I know some of you here are, 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 are going to vote for this because, you know, you're afraid about explaining your vote to some grieving widow. There aren't going to be any grieving widows because this vehicle isn't going to save the life of one police officer. It's not about the public safety. It's about fulfilling the dream of a few people in Washington and, 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 and creating a domestic violent, excuse me, a, a, a domestic terrorism program locally so that they can sell things and give their money to their buddies. It's not about safety. You know, this vehicle is not going to save even one life. It's not about that. It's not about opposing your, your police department. You know, I remember getting a lot of grief not too long ago about supporting the police department's position on the pumpkin festival. And now people have the guts, I mean, excuse me, they don't have, they don't tell it to me. They, they have the audacity to say that I don't care about our police department. They have the audacity to say that I don't care about the safety of our police. That's absolutely ridiculous. This is something that we just have to say no to because if we don't say no to it, they're just gonna keep spending that kind of money on things. 
They're going to set policy that just fuels war. It just fuels war. And we have to, as a, as a, as a local government, we can do much more to strengthen our nation by making sure that people are fed, by making sure that people are educated, by making sure that we have strong economies. That sort of thing is going to do much more to strengthen our national security than any one of these vehicles. Now, Council um, Pack, I think our rules have, have, have a provision in them for a time limit. So okay, I will wrap right up. up and I'll wrap up on a topic. Right, exactly. That's supposed to be what I'm going to be supposed to be talking about. And that's dispatch protocol. It was asked, and we've never really I read the paper the other day. One of the local police chiefs already has a scenario, or already has a situation where he used it, the, the Bearcat, as did uh, 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 our, one of our own captains. I just want to ask when we get this thing, What's the dispatch protocol? I mean, when, when the sheriff calls up, when the, uh, the chief of police calls up from Alstead or whatever, are we going to be sending it out? Or are they just going to be taking it? Because if the winger is going to be taking it out, we're just going to be increasing, or we're going to become, what, the state police, the, the regional police? We're going, we're going to start our, our already uh, uh, stretched resources. But I mean, we don't have the resources to staff a, uh, a satellite police a, 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 a station here on Main Street. We don't have enough resources to, to for bike patrols or to say nothing about foot patrols in our neighborhood. I mean, we're already uh, uh, patrolling state roads <coughs> when the state is, is sticking it in our, in, in our eye by, by withholding millions of dollars every year for obligations that they were supposed to uh, uh, take care of for us. You know? So, are we going to have to stretch our resources to become an entity that really already exists in the National Guard and the state police? And I, I don't know, is there somebody here can answer that question about dispatch protocol? I guess that's about all you're going to hear from me for a little while. I guess I'm tired of the uh, all the notoriety, all the phone calls late at night <laughs> and everything. So uh, I'm only going to ask you, you know, think about how you feel about this. Don't think about how you think about it, you know, about, you know, what, what, what budgetary things. How do you feel about it? Is this the right thing to do or is it not the right thing? So I guess that's all I'm going to say and I appreciate the time and I apologize for being more than I have a lot. She was really upset because she had been listening to the news, and the way that the news was portraying this was that anybody who was against it was a free stater, or a, in a fringe group, or was anti-government, or anti-police. And she said, I'm just calling to tell you I'm not a free stater, I'm not anti-government. And I got a lot of calls like that. I got calls from mothers and fathers and grandfathers and grandmothers <coughs> and local business owners and renters and uh, property tax payers. And um, there, in addition to those 80 or 90 calls that I got, maybe 30 emails, maybe um, another 500 on a petition, another 150 on a petition. Um, I know, like when I worked in customer service, they always said for every one complaint, 
there's 10 people that are pissed off. Mm -hmm. And um, there are a lot of reasons that people don't want it. They, they feel like even though we have the grant money to buy it, that doesn't mean that we would have, we'd have to come up with money for maintenance or training. And there's all kinds of um, concerns with, with uh, the fiscal part of it. <coughs> Um, and then there's concerns about who are we? Who do we want to be? How do we want to define ourselves as a city? And I really like that people care about this city and the quality of life here. And I really commend the, the police. Um, I've called them a lot of times, a lot of times. And several times for domestic violence situations, which I think one of the young women that lives near me would not be here if the police hadn't shown up when they did. So in no way do I not support them. But I, I don't feel that we need this. I feel that it, it feeds the fear. It feeds, um, it, it, it isn't, I just don't think we have that level of crime. This is in LA, it's not New York, it's not Miami. Um, we don't have gang wars and riots where we need batons and tear gas. And, and I may be naive. I haven't ridden in a um, police car. I've never had a gun pointed at me. But I'm not so sure that even if we had that, at some point somebody's going to have to get out of that truck and we're going to be still faced with that same similar situation. Um, and a lot of the names on the petitions weren't necessarily from Keene, particularly the last 150 from the change.org that we received an email. But some of those people, I recognize their names, like uh, friends of mine whose daughters in, in college in, in New York. Uh, a friend of mine I went to college <coughs> with who doesn't live here anymore, but they still have an attachment to this city. You know, they still have, they still care about Little King, New Hampshire. There's something that sort of touches their heart and makes them want to come back. And even when they leave, they still come back. They visit, they visit family, they come for the pumpkin festival. There's a great sense of community and pride. And I think that, um, you know, if I felt like there was this eminent danger and these situations, <laughs> where I thought we really needed it. I, I wouldn't be standing up here, but I, ju I just feel that, you know, <coughs> people have spoken, and they said it's just not who we are. And um, I, I think, you know, this grant has been out there for a while. There were, when I looked up other cities that have gotten it, you know, they got vehicles two years ago. And maybe they'll, you know, I, I have a feeling this grant's gonna be around for a while. I think we could revisit this if, if something happened or some situation came up. Maybe in a year, um, our city will grow and more crime will explode. And I think we, we need it. I don't know. But I don't think this is the right time. And um, I really hope that you guys look in your heart and, and, and think about it. And this is not about uh, saying that we're anti-police or anti-government. I'm a city councilor. I obviously am very pro government. So thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. I um, have done, like I'm sure all the counselors here have done, it's a lot of soul searching. We, uh, I suspect we've all gotten calls. <coughs> I certainly want to thank everybody that called me and left me a message uh, saying how they felt about this. Um, I appreciate that input. Uh, I also voted in favor of the Bearcat back in December, in or whenever, wherever it was. And part of the reason that I did that was that I have faith in our police department, in Chief Miola and his uh, folks, as well as Chief Lamro, who is head of the emergency, I forget the name, I'm sorry, Chief. Um, but I, I, these are men that I trust. Um, 
I think coming from Ward 1, we have lots of contact with the police and um, we've been generally treated really well. We have a question, we go to them and we get answers. If they feel that we, that we can benefit from this Bearcat, then I'm going to believe it. Um, unfortunately, if I thought that this money could go from here to DHHS up on 809 Court Street, well then great. I'm sorry, Chief, but I'd rather have food and shelter than a beer cat. But that's not the way silos of funding work. So I want to encourage uh, my fellow uh, counselors to remember that this is kind of a crazy time. Um, we're getting a lot of, there's a lot of fear out there. Uh, as a therapist, I have a lot of clients coming in who can't find a job, who can't find a place to live because they can't come up with a, uh, a safety deposit. No, that isn't right. Security, security. deposit. Thank you. <laughs> uh, a security deposit. I have people that are wondering why a middle schooler in Walpole would bring a gun to school and shoot it. Um, we have uh, representatives uh, in our state that are saying everybody should be armed. I, I think that some of this fear and worry that we have has been centered on the beer cat and it's been fanned to, to, to symbolize this fear and this worry that we have about our taxes, about the things that we have to pay for. So um, I, again, I thank my citizens for calling me. I'm always glad to hear from you, but uh, I will be voting to keep this informational and against Councillor Clark's amendment. Thank you. For all of you who received the multitude of phone calls, I also received a multitude of phone calls, and I don't even have a vote. So, consider yourself so lucky. At least you you get the vote on this, uh, Councilor Jacob. Thank you. Uh, I am going to support the amendment. I really respect and appreciate the work of the Key Police Department, and I think a lot of the strength of their work and what I value is that they are face to face uh, in their interactions with the public. And I am concerned that this uh, Bearcat is moving in a direction of going behind some sort of a wall between the Peen police and the public. And that concerns me. Uh, I think we are a whole society and not to be divided. Uh, the other concern I have is that most, if not all, of the uses that I hear being uh, put forward for this uh, equipment are hypothetical and yet I do hear uh, also some very real needs being put forth. Uh, granted we can't take the money from the one and put it into the other but it's hard for me to, to sit here and uh, or stand here and support hypothetical needs uh, when I know that there are real needs that, that are not being addressed and, and that have been expressed by the police department so I, I definitely want to support the police and I definitely want the police to continue to be there with us. Uh, I think that's been their strength, and that's one of the reasons we have such a wonderful community is, the, is because of the visibility and the, the personality of the police department. So I'm going to support the amendment. Thank you, Your Honor. The, um, the people that, that know me know that I can't be pressured from either side and I take my time and I research it and, and I look at this. <clears throat> and I can tell you this is about a 52-48 split for me. I can go through and I can look at a whole bunch of reasons why we, we shouldn't get it. Um, and I can look at reasons why we should. Um, the biggest reason that um, I'm voting for it because it's not just going to be a police vehicle. There are other things in emergency operations that we can use it for, and I suspect that um, Chief Lamberoth of the Operations Center 
we'll coordinate that if we have a problem with Vermont Yankee, we have another big storm, or we have a flood, there's certain ways that you can do it. I was in the flood of 05. Getting people out on canoes was not exactly the best and safest way, especially when we had to shut down the, um, the road because a lot of old houses have their electric boxes on the floor, which ended up being below water. And um, the bear cat going to stop that. The the other problems that um, you know you, you go back and forth. Yes, I put it bluntly. This was a PR nightmare. It wasn't done correctly. It was the, the um, it was applied for. It came in. We we got some information and we made a decision based on that information. And then the team sentinel went out and got freedom of information at information, then it's going, wait a minute, this isn't the team that I live in or the team that I think it is. And so that just had me swinging back and forth. To me, if anything like this comes forward in the future, if I don't get the information that I should have gotten as we're getting over the past three, four months, I would automatically ask to be put on more time because if we knew it and we understood completely why we were going to get it, I think we would be able to explain to the people, and we just didn't do that. And, and finally, when we go, there's two things that, that go, all the Bearcats have not been bought by federal funds. A number of communities around the country have bought Bearcat with drug compensation money. So it's going back and forth. For example, um, Douglas County, Georgia, purchase their money with contracts. Council, purchase. just a second. I'm not going to permit these outbursts to continue. You all had an opportunity at the FOP, at the Finance Organization and Personnel Committee meeting, to speak, and we didn't interrupt you. We sat quietly and we listened courteously to everything you had to say. If you're not prepared to give us the same degree of courtesy, I'm going to ask that you be removed. Now, I would ask no more outbursts. Like I said, Douglas County um, used their money, drug compensation month, you know what it is, drug, um, we do this in Keene to buy other equipment and stuff. Roswell, Minnesota, another place, we had just the same amount of concerns that we have, why are we bringing this vehicle into town? And, and finally, what I don't think people realize, because it was being purchased by federal money, any federal organization or agency can use that vehicle for their own use if they so require. So having a position in this part of the state also fulfills some of the federal needs. Any, anyone else with Council Thank you, Your Honor.